I'm going to go pretty quickly to the message. I want to tell you folks that I have a message of the hour for the hour. You know my normal regular type of preaching, but I come to you with a very heavy heart and concerned about our country, and I know that you are. So I'm going to share some things with you. But before I do, I want us to pray. I want you to pray. Now, nothing works like prayer, but sometimes we have to do something besides pray. The faith without works is dead, being alone. How I many of you know that's still in the Bible? I'm going to share a lot of scriptures with you. I will not be able to cover all these, but I want to give you scripture. But I want us to first pray. I want to talk to you about the wicked. Everybody say the wicked. Not the wicked, but the wicked. How many of you know that every person in America fits in the one or two categories? Amen. And we want to be in the right one, don't we? The righteous one. And so I want you to pray and ask God to prepare your heart to receive this message, but also to help you to not just simply pray in this hour, but do what do you need to do as a child of God. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. It's incredible what you placed in your word. And Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and the gift of salvation. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful country we live in. The liberties, the blessings that we enjoy. Truly, we're the envy of the world. But Father, you see and you know all that's going on. The tug of war, the conflict. And I'm asking you, Father, you're the God of peace. You're the God of peace. And I pray, Lord God, that you would work in a mighty, mighty, mighty body way. Touch our hearts today, Lord. Prepare our hearts to receive your word. And Lord, we need your guidance, your inspiration, your revelation. So that we, Lord, would do what people of God should do in an hour such as this. And Father, we pray this now in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen, amen, amen. Some of you already have the outlines. If not, um, I provided you with a significant amount of information. And um, I'd rather do overload than underload. How about that? Let me read my text, and then I want to just read one little thing to you. Kind of make you aware of one of many reasons why I stand here very disturbed and alarmed. Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous, everybody say the people of God, are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. I received this letter just recently, and it um, get a lot of mail, but when I get something like this, I feel like, hey, somebody's got to do something. Pastor, I'm writing to inform you and many others as mailings go out in the event you are not already aware of. Get this now, of a recent bill passed by the state of California, Senate Bill 957, which provides for the removal of minor children from the custody of their parents by child protective services. If parents do not approve of or allow physicians to change the gender of their children whose minor children express their desire to change their gender. Did you get that? That's in America. That's in this country that we live in. 
I've seen things take place that I never dreamed would happen. But let me just share some scriptures with you because I know I hear people talking and, and I say sometimes I can I know what people are thinking. I can hear the wheels turning. You know my normal style is to preach things that are affirming, faith building. But let me just share some scriptures with you that Paul shared with the person who was one of the closest to him, his son of the faith, Timothy. He said, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Exhort, reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine, because the time will come when they will not endure or put up with sound doctrine, but after their own lust or desires shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. In that same book, in the chapter that precedes this, I just read from 2 Timothy chapter 4, but in the opening of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, this is a scripture, the first sermon I ever preached was from this text, and I've shared this numerous times, but it is very fitting today. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, and then he explains why. Because men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, we all know what is going to happen 100 days from now. And I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. When somebody says, I'm going to do something to you, I learned the hard way. And I almost, I almost didn't make it as your pastor because I, I didn't take somebody seriously when he said, I'm going to kill you or you're going to kill me one. It's time for us to listen to what people say. And we've been warned by political leaders on both sides of the aisle. How many of you know what, what I mean when I use that language? And they, we've been told by them of the importance of the upcoming elections. And this is what they have told us on both sides. They've told us that this is the most important election of our lifetime and that it could determine the destiny of our country for years to come. How many of you have heard that? There's a very famous saying, I've heard it most of my life. I've used it here before, and that saying is worth our paying heed to it. For to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Now, we should have learned from the previous election the one that we're now involved in, when we were told in plain, simple language that if that particular party won the White House, they won and they told us what they were going to do, and guess what? They're doing exactly what they said they were going to do to this precious, wonderful country of ours. When the President of the United States says, I, I'm going to make ab abortion the law of the land. Somebody, somewhere, needs to sit up and take notice. Can I get some kind of affirmation out there? How many of you know that Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit? Amen? Amen. You don't have to judge people. You can apprise them. You can appraise them. Just look at this word wicked for a moment. It's a powerful word. It means, refers to people who are guilty of hostility to God or his people. Now, I want you later, I want you to reread the scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first five verses. Because Paul tells you what people 
will become like in the last days. And he said, because of that, it's going to be hard, harsh, difficult times. And that's where we are because, because Christians today, the people of God, are becoming victims of a number of these things. Unthankful, unholy, not only that, but they're despisers of those who are good. So this word refers to people who are hostile to God, but also to the people of God. Uh, they're guilty of sin against God and against men. It means to be unrighteous, have an unrighteously cause, to be wicked or to act wickedly. It indicates people who are enemies of God and his people. Now, how many of you know that when people like that are in the driver's seat, when they are our rulers, they're our leaders, we may as well man up and get ready. But the writer says that the consequence of this, the result is that the people mourn. How many of you know that there's a difference <laughs> in who is in the driver's seat? There's a difference in who is in leadership. How many of you know that? Now, I don't want you to sit there now, mute. I want, you, I want to know that you're out there and that you're on board with what I'm talking about because, listen, something's got to happen. Something's got to happen, amen? And could I just tell you this in plain, simple English? It would surprise you at how many Christians did not vote in the last election. How many Christians have never voted? And yet there are people on the planet that would give a right arm to be able to vote to elect their leaders and to have leaders who are ultimately responsible to them. And again, it's not enough just to gather around and say, well, let's just pray about this. We have privileges and opportunities, and we need to use them. Amen? Now, think about this scripture. When the righteous are ruling, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. There's a, there's a sense in America today. And I'm not going to call names, but there's a sense in America today. You know how old I am. I've, I've lived a pretty long time. Thank God for every day, and I do that every day. But I've seen a real shift in the overall attitude and the aura, the atmosphere in the air. But there's something that we can do about these things. Amen? We've got the power to do that. And there are enough God-fearing people in this country, if we would just learn to stand together and stand up, we can get anything done that we want to get done. Amen? What is interesting is that people mourn, but after a while I think people get tired of mourning. There's a scripture that if you read American history, you read about the founding of America. There was one verse of scripture that was used more than any other scripture. And I think it's very interesting. Powerful. If you read any of our founding fathers, you will hear this phrase. This you'll, you'll hear the scripture. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now, we've got some very smart people in this church, but sometimes people underestimate themselves. So let me just tell you in plain, simple language, doing right reaps good benefits. Doing right, doing right reaps good harvest, brings fruitful results, is beneficial, advantageous. The word exalt literally means to, to lift up, to elevate, to progress, to advance. That's the result of a nation of people who are righteous. But there's this another side to that. There's a a flip side of that coin, but sin, somebody say sin, is a reproach to any people. 
And just think about the very opposite. This word reproach has a lot of little tentacles to it. The bottom line, the bottom line, the end result is that it is detrimental. It is detrimental. Uh, there's actually the concept that it is the downfall. If, if righteousness is the lifting up, then uh, sin is the very opposite. How many of you don't like the feeling that is in our country today and, and the attitude that the world is getting uh, of us? And you know that I'm not a violent person. I pride myself on being a fairly gentle person, even when I was in law enforcement. <laughs> I only hit one person, and he literally had just tried to kill me. I was in the process at the moment of trying to kill me. And it's amazing how when somebody is really trying to kill you, boy, it's amazing. You just somehow get in the spirit here. <laughs> A spirit of revival, amen? I cut people a lot, of, a lot of slack. But I have to tell you that I'm not happy at the status that our country has in the world. But I'm looking for a time when that status is going to be improved, amen? And we're going to quit cowing down. Now, I want to just share some scriptures here, and there's a lot of them. And I want you to read these scriptures. I want you to read them and read them and read them. I'm skipping over some things here because some of you already have the notes, and you can just follow along there. It's amazing, as far as God's concerned, there are two kinds of people in the world, righteous and unrighteous, godly and evil, godly, wicked. One of two categories. There's no in-between. And it's amazing the scriptures that refer to both categories of these people, but do it in a way that is intended to show a contrast. How many of you know what a contrast is? That's important. I'm not trying to educate you today, but this is a very important grammatical concept. Comparison is when you show how people are alike. Now, I'm looking at two ladies here, and uh, people, some people have a, a real issue with Donna and Rhonda, or Rhonda and Donna. I know the difference between the two. <laughs> but some people have a real issue with their names. I'm telling you they do. But anyway... They are alike in a lot of ways. Now, that's, that's comparison. Now, co contrast is when you talk about the differences, how they are different. And so I want you to listen to these scriptures where God had put in his word to show this incredible difference between the righteous and the wicked. And remember now, this is God talking through his servants, all right? I'm not going to give the scripture location because you'll have them if you don't have them already. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, in this world ungodly also means wicked, shall perish. Anybody in his right mind, if they read that scripture, boy, they ought to want to get things right between them and God. Amen? Oh, let the wickedness of the... Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous, for the righteous God tries the hearts and reigns. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hates. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. You see, God is committed to his, to his children. I don't know how many times I've preached over the years from the Psalms to tell you what God is to you and what God is doing for you right now. When you got up this morning while you were asleep, God was doing some things for you. You were not consciously aware of it. It didn't matter. He was on the job. When you woke up, God's still doing some things for you. There are incredible things that he's already done once, and the fact that he did it once is sufficient. 
But he didn't just bless us and then withdraw. Amen. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. That's still in the Bible. Amen. So just think about the difference here. The Bible talks about the people who compare themselves with the wicked. It's like, okay, here's little old me, you know. I'm just driving a Honda. And he's got a Rolls Royce. But did you know that this life and right now is not all there is? Nobody in this place heard what I just said. Amen. Some of my last words to Chuck Denton. For Brother Chuck, this life is not all there is. Amen. Somebody said all of this in heaven too. My God, if you're a child of God and you're, if you're in relation with, with him, that's the greatest thing that you could possess or experience in this age, in this life. And just think, this is just a dressing room. This is just a preparation. Listen to what these scriptures say. Many, let me read this one again. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord upholds the righteous. The wicked borrow and pay not again, but the righteous show mercy and they give. Let me just stop right here, and I've, given, I've done an, a little insertion here. And I've given you, I've given you, and you may not have gotten this yet, but if not, then you will get a comparative list of the two political parties. There is a amazing, there's an amazing difference between the two categories of people. Can I just tell you this? And I'm trying to be very cautious here because, you see, we have the same freedom of speech as everybody else. But they don't want us to exercise it. Amen? Some of them just may be in churches today, politicking, but you can only do that. The Constitution only allows one side to do that. Well, I'm, I'm glad that somebody broke that rule the other day. And lo and behold, the, the consequence was going to turn out to be real good. Put that on hold right there. There are people that are really good at spending your money. And one group is big on that, giving away your money. But I'll tell you, you know what is amazing? When you look at how they give, they are stingy. They are tightwads. They want to give your money away. And the tragedy is that a lot of people who are beneficiaries of their giving don't realize that any money that they have, these people are taking a part of that to give back to them. I know that, that, that that's political, well, I intended it to be. Speak the truth and lie not, the Bible says. Amen? People on one of the two parties, they're far more generous than those who are not. All the horns of the wicked will also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. The Lord preserves all those that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. How many of you know this life is not all there is? And how many of you know that right now is the worst that you're going to ever have it? But when that trumpet sounds or you breathe the last breath, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, <laughs> from that moment forward, there's going to be radical changes. Amen. Harsh won't have the body that he has right now. The other issues, I see that we're missing some of our very faithful, regular people here today. And I know that some of them are getting older. I know that. And I'm very conscious of people that we have put to rest recently. And some of you did not know our brother Raymond, but he was such a precious person. And um, thank God that Next to the last time I saw him, he knew that I was there and we were able to communicate for a few minutes. I had no idea that he'd be dead. 
as quickly as he did. But that's the worst he'll ever have. Amen? <laughs> Don't you wish the Lord would come right now? The Lord preserves all those that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Now this is, this is the Bible talking about a contrast between the people of God and those who are not. The Lord will not allow the soul of the righteous to famish, but he cast away the substance of the wicked. And here's one of my scriptures. You've heard me quote this in almost every funeral, especially if it's a Christian. The member of the just or righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inherit the earth. Think about that. Some of these folks have a lot of real estate now. Some of them are very, very wealthy. But guess what? One day that's going to all come to naught. Amen. And we're going to be a part of the people that inherit the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't, don't act so, so <laughs> somber. This is serious stuff that I'm talking about here. And I want you to talk it, take it that way. But, uh, but just listen to what the Bible says. God is to or will be to his people. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. Now, I'm not doing a lot of commenting on these scriptures I'm I'm because I, I want to get a lot of word into you and, and build to a point. But just think about this. What is the first and greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, all of your mind, all your strength. Now, what is the second? Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Boy, that's a lot of love. That's powerful love. Amen? But it's not enough just to speak audibly and say to somebody, I love you, or to say to somebody, I care about you, because if you do, then you will act like it and not just say it. Does that make sense? The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. God is not interested in all that wicked people try to do to get his attention. God's interested in what's in the heart of a man. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loves him that follows after righteous. Get this, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Can I get a hallelujah there? For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect or complete shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. How many of you know that one of these days, it's only going to be us that's here? Amen? Now, that's a contrast. But let's just look at some other scriptures that the, the Bible has some pretty strong things to say about the wicked. The wicked should be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. That ought to scare us enough or concern us enough to go and talk to our neighbors who are on the other side. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there was no room for God. Let me just stop right here. Let me just stop right here. I want to make sure that I've got 100% attention here. And just remember now, we are one nation unto God. And our motto is, in God we trust. Do you ever look at money and see what's written on it? You ought to do that. It's a reminder. In God we trust. That is the official motto of America. We pride ourselves in being a Christian America. But I actually sat in my living room a few years ago at one of the conventions for one of the parties 
And the delegates voted not to have the word God in their platform. It created quite an uproar. And so, and I saw this, they brought it back to the floor, to the delegates, and gave them a chance to vote again. And I've been in a lot of meetings. You hear this a lot in the General Assembly, you know. <laughs> I'm still recovering from the last one here a few days ago. Uh, a lot of voice votes. You can do a voice vote, everybody raise your hand, or you can divide the house. We also had devices we could vote electron electronically. But the simplest way is, all in favor say aye. All opposed, no. The guy, the guy did that. I listened very carefully. And he very quickly said, the ayes have it. To re in other words, to, um, to restore it. But what he said was the majority was not. The majority of people voted against including it. And as a matter of fact, you could hear the rumbling through the people as they expressed their displeasure with him saying, the word God will be in our platform. A majority of the people even if a significant number of them, can you imagine people who live in America, who are blessed as we are, and yet they're, they don't want the word God in their platform? They don't want to be associated with God? Did you hear what that scripture says? <laughs> they just don't have room for God. They don't have a place for God. Think about that. That is, that is frightening. Let me find that scripture again. I want, I want to read it again. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him, that is God. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. How many of you know that without God, we're nothing? He gives all life and breath and all things. I'm going to just let you read these scriptures here. Most of these on your own. Let me share a couple of scriptures in that category though. Because I don't want this to be all downhill. And we're supposed to love every person. The Bible says, There's no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. But now the last scripture that I have used, and I chose this scripture very specifically. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he, that is the Lord, will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. How many of you know that Jesus died for every person on the planet? And right now we're talking about every American. Remember, church, we have rights in this country. And with rights come responsibility. Amen? One of the things that I have a big, big, big issue with, and that is Christians. Notice I didn't say professing Christians. Christians. People that I know have, they're some good people. But they associate themselves with they consider themselves to be a part of a body of people, a party that the two main things that they believe, the two main things that they ride on, and they're going to try to ride on it to keep the White House, and that is same-sex marriage and abortion. You cannot, if you want to run for public office and be supported by one of those parties, you must believe those two things. If you do not, you get no support. You get no help whatsoever. Can you imagine that? 
Can you imagine that? Things that are blatantly wrong according to the Bible. Now, later I'll deal with that a little bit, not, not this morning, but let me just insert something to you right now, church. If you think we're being put to the test right now, as Jesus, Terry, as you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. The fight is just on. Lying, deceit. And I'm going to give you an example of blatant lying and misrepresentation in a very serious matter by the mainstream media. Somebody remind me of John Lewis, okay, in case I get carried away here. Think about this. I pastored a man several years ago. He's one of the finest people I've ever known. He was a member of that party. The presidential election came up where it was obvious that the man who was running on the other side believed in abortion. And so I talked to this man, and I was not able to persuade him to vote for the opponent, but I persuaded him not to vote for the man of his party. I said, surely you're not going to vote for a man who believes in killing babies. I have heard our current president, and listen, church, listen, listen. Because of all that's happened in the last few days, if we're not careful, we will forget something. And that is that we currently have a president. And he will be for almost six more months. And I've heard him make this statement in the past but I've heard him make it again in the last few days. It is one of his number one objectives. He's got an agenda. And just recently, he has said, I will make abortion the law of the land. Out of all the things, now you think about how, how concerned people are. I heard somebody in this in this room, talk about going to the grocery store this week. What are you doing now, preacher? I'm, I'm just sharing things practically. Amen? And what, what they paid and what they got in return. It's amazing the people in America who are very upset at the way things are. But it is incredible how often people say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just little old me. You get enough of those little old me's together, I'll guarantee you it can change the tide. Amen? Can you imagine? Let me just take a moment here. The clock right now is cooperating with me. Norma McCovey. Norma McCovey. Norma McCovey. Did everybody get that name? Everybody's got it. She became with child. And I'm not going to get into all the terminology here, but I'll just say that she was not abused. She became with child. She did not want to bear that child. She had an abortion. It was illegal. She went to court. She was convicted. She appealed. It went to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the U.S. Supreme Court in 1973 overturned, they came up with the Roe v. Wade, which preceded and abolished all preceding laws. This lady later became a Christian. Now, let's, let's just see how honest people are here and what they're really interested in. A few years afterward, this lady became a Christian. She immediately wanted to make it known publicly that I told a lie. All of this was brought about by a lie. She started crusading as a, pro, uh, as a pro-lifer. Boy, they did not want to see her. They didn't want to hear her. They didn't want to hear a word she had to say. They tried to discredit her, to play it down. 
Can you imagine? Just think about one million people. That's hard enough for us to comprehend. I guess the largest crowd of people that I've ever been in was the World Series in Baltimore. That's a lot of people, I tell you. 100,000 people, that's a lot of people. But now, just think about what a million is. And do you know that we're approaching 70 million abortions? Can you imagine how many human beings that is? Of course, they slip in these little terms, you know, trying to make you think that most of these are women who've been abused or the mother's life is at risk or a family member is brought on this own. Those kinds of things, you know, to stir the emotions of people. But what they won't tell you is who has most of these and why they just don't want that child. And you just think about this now, that there are, there are people who believe in killing that child up to the moment of birth. I didn't expect anybody to shout here this morning, but listen, church, I want you to know that I am dead serious about this and something's got to happen. I don't have to tell you who to vote for. You've got two choices. But let me remind you how much things have changed in my life. When I was received the oath to become a law enforcement officer. Within hours, I became one of the first students in a new statewide training program. And out of all the things that I could have been taught, there are two things that stand out in my mind above all the others. And that is that sodomy is against the law. And they told me what the definition of abortion was and that abortion is against the law. And abortion is the expulsion of the fetus from the womb before it's viable. Actually, I was in a meeting one time and I actually saw a video of an abortion being performed. I'll tell you what, it'll make you think, my God, how could human beings do this to an unborn baby? This is one of the worst blights on America. And some of these people believe and I'm not going to call any names, but some of these latest high-level people have been accused of believing in abortion right up to birth. And there are some of them who actually, I'm going to be a little, a little graphic here, but you've got to get this, church. And sometimes, you know, people, they, they need to be... I don't know, taken by the nap of the neck is what they say where I come from. You know, get their attention. Just think about this. Just think about this. If a man and a woman that lived over in Brutley Lager or Palmer, somewhere over there, had decided that they didn't want to have that child that Mrs. Griffith was carrying. She took certain steps. I wouldn't be able to look right here and see Eloise Grimes. Can you imagine that the world would have been a different place without that lady? To hear Rosalind playing the piano, just think. What if your mother had decided to have an abortion? 
But there's no way to describe what these people are doing, a lot of it, except it is murder. Murder. When they do something to that child when it is still in the birth canal to end its life. But then there are people who are, they, they hey, just once that baby is out, they take it right to a table and they kill it right there. That's happening. Church, we cannot, we cannot let this be the thing that identifies America. Amen? And if the present administration stays in, or people of that party, they're going to be pushing this thing and they're going to, they're going to either stack the U.S. Supreme Court or when there's an open, they're going to make sure there are people there who believe in all of their ludicrous, outlandish procedures and things. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You see, we're going to answer, too. We're going to answer, too. We have rights. We have responsibilities. The thing about, the thing about same-sex marriages, I never dreamed that I would actually sit in my living room and see a man who's running for the highest office in America to stand and for him to be introduced and uh, before all of that is over with, he introduces his husband. And, of course, they embrace each other and kiss on national television. That's what we've gone to. That's what we've stooped to. Don't worry about what the Bible says. Don't worry about what the Bible says. It's not an outdated book, folks. It's still just as real. And did you know that every one of them, every one of them, every one of them, before they reached the office that they're at, they had to put their hand on a holy Bible and make an oath to do certain things. And it concludes, so help me God. Every one of them, it is a, they have to do that. So help me God. Last say, so help us God right now. My heart is aching. I don't, I don't like to do this kind of, of preaching. You talk about somebody, somebody, somebody has got to send forth the word. Somebody's got to lift up their voice. Somebody's got to do something. Let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. See, I've got, I've got a lot of liberty. And let me just tell you that we have two choices right now, and it doesn't matter if one of those choices is eliminated, which I doubt. But they'll find someone that will be of the same school of thought. But let me tell you about the other one. He's not perfect. I'd like to be able to sometimes to take him aside, you know, behind the barn. And, but, but let me tell you some things. We know what he can do. We know what he has done. So it's just not a lot of talk there or meaningless words. And let me tell you also what I know. I know this, the day that he was inaugurated, I watched every part of it and I watched the church service. And of course, they didn't talk a lot, the news media, about who the preachers were. But I knew, the, I knew those two preachers. One of them is a Holy Ghost filled Assembly of God preacher, Samuel Rodriguez, one of the most noted ministers in America today. He had a Holy Ghost filled preacher in that man. And then lo and behold, the lady that he had to preach, she has a background in the church of God. T.L. Lowry is considered her, was her godfather. She also filled with the Holy Spirit. 
She was another speaker. As a matter of fact, she was appointed by that particular man to be a spiritual liaison. And I know that he gathered together a group of pastors and ministers to give him counsel, advice. I know that because I personally know a man who was one of those people, and he stood right here before, sent right there. Tim Hill was one of those people, and a young man that we, I know distantly, I knew his father and a lot of his family, never met Jensen, but Jensen Franklin was one of those people. And of course, if you watch the convention that happened a few days ago, and then you compare that with the convention that you're going to see in a few days, actions speak louder than words, and you will see a totally different atmosphere. Just to look, the look on the faces of the people, angry. Upset, downcast. You won't see a lot of joy and celebration like you saw in the other one. And you're not going to hear people talk about God and Jesus and about miracles. That ought to tell us something right, right there. That ought to speak volumes. You're talking about two different worlds, two different worldviews. I pray almost every day. It is my intention every day not to end a day without praying for all of our leaders, all of our leaders from the top to the bottom, regardless of their level, that God gives them, give them wisdom, guidance, and counsel, that he will deal with them according to right and righteousness. And I believe he will do that. They may or they may not respond to what God is saying to them. Amen. How many of you know that I love you and that I love people, but I'm concerned? And you need to make sure that you're registered to vote, make sure that it's current, and you need to get out and vote. Amen. And how many of you know that God's bigger than all of this? Amen. A man that has known at least his name is known by many of you, Gene Rice. <laughs> I guess I'm guilty of many isms, and he's, he's guilty of gene isms. And one of his many sayings is some of our churches are just one funeral away from revival. Think about the implications of that. How many of you know that God holds? the life of every one of us in his hand. He gives to all life and breath and all things. All he's got to do is hold his breath. Medical science can't do anything. They're helpless. I'm not wishing that upon any of these people, but I'm just trying to tell you that God is bigger than all of this. Amen? I don't want to see tragedy come to anybody, but I want to see people who love God, who fear God, who honor God, who have the interest of America at heart. I probably, I probably need to get this little weight off here too. Um, I was never in the military. Both of my brothers were. I served my four years in law enforcement during the, the Vietnam War all the riots, all the demonstrations, marching. And of course, when Dr. King was assassinated. I remember that night, I remember that day vividly, and the aftermath. But I have a place in my heart for our veterans. And to think that we have veterans who are sleeping on the street and people who came to this country illegally and they have been given a cell phone and they're being put up 
in a posh hotel. I say, where in the, who in the world lost his mind enough to do that? Listen, church, we, we need to get upset. We need to get moved to action. Amen? Amen? Father, our trust is in you. Our trust is in you. Lord, I know that you want every person to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's not your will that any should perish. Lord, I don't want to see anyone go to hell. But, Father, I love my country. I love this country, Lord. You have blessed us. I know that. I have seen. I have done study of this country. I know, Father, what you've done for us, what you're doing for us. You have blessed us so abundantly. And when we think about what the average person in this room, even the one whose income at the moment may be the lowest, but by the standards of people in many nations, the poorest person in this room would be rich if they were in that country. Father, I pray that you would stir our hearts. I pray that you would stir our hearts, Lord. Move us, dear God, to action, to use those liberties that we have. And Father, I'm asking you, I don't have to tell you, Father, who is involved. I don't have to tell you, Father, what is at stake. You know all about that. We want your will to be done, Father, for this country. We pray, Lord God, that you would work things out for your glory. We want your kingdom to be manifested, your sovereign power and presence to be evident, dear God, in this country. Work and move, Lord God, as only you can. And Father, I pray that you would give the leaders of our nation, from the smallest to the highest, everyone at every level, Give them, Lord, truly guidance, wisdom, and counsel. Deal with them, Lord, according to right and righteousness. Speak to their hearts, God. Help them to realize their responsibility, Lord, and that they should serve under your authority. Holy, 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 holy. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. 